Hi, my name is Jeffrey van Gogh. I'm a tech lead on Android Studio with a focus on programming languages. Today, I'm going to talk about the state of Kotlin on Android. For those who have not looked at Kotlin before, here's a brief overview. Kotlin is a modern programming language and it has many features that aid productivity. It comes with things like nullability support in the type system to help you avoid null pointer exception at runtime. Shorter syntax through lambdas makes callback code more succinct and readable. Here you see a call to an extension function, which is a feature to make helper code more discoverable and avoid polluting your code with utils.everywhere. In this example, that call is made as part of a template expression, which is a compile time checked alternative to stringed format with an elegant syntax. The last highlight of this example shows using properties to provide a level of abstraction over getters and setters and allow an assignment syntax. Android has officially supported Kotlin since 2017, and there is good reasons why we fell in love with Kotlin. First of all, the language takes care of a lot of boilerplate, allowing the developer to spend more time focusing on the business at hand. Next, Kotlin's strong type system helped prevent runtime issues like null pointer exceptions and string format issues. Of course, it would be hard to get started with Kotlin without seamless interrupt with the Java programming language, allowing for a gradual adoption of Kotlin into existing projects. Finally, coroutines provide an elegant way to do this asynchronous programming, avoiding spaghetti code often associated with callbacks. And it's not just us who've embraced Kotlin. A recent survey shows that developers who adopt Kotlin are 50% more likely to be very satisfied with their programming language. That same survey shows that 60% of Android Pro developers are using Kotlin in their code base. And 70% of top 1,000 apps on the Google Play Store are using Kotlin code. The credit for creating and maintaining Kotlin, of course, goes to JetBrains and its wonderful team of engineers. Since officially supporting Kotlin three years ago, Google has stepped up to help this awesome project. Together with JetBrains, we have formed a foundation for Kotlin to ensure the language ages well. For example, through a careful process of vetting breaking changes. Our contributions extend beyond policies and reviews. Google has a team of engineers contributing to the Kotlin compiler as their full-time job currently focused on helping get the new IR backend and frontend compilers ready. We're also working on building Kotlin-related tooling, such as Kotlin Symbol Processing, about which we'll learn more later in this talk. Here is an overview of some of the ways that we expanded Kotlin support in Android in the last year. On the library side, we added new Kotlin-first libraries, such as Paging 3.0 and Jetpack Compose. We also added new Kotlin extensions for Play Core and Google Maps. These make using the existing APIs more Kotlin idiomatic. As Android developers, you spend a lot of time interacting with the Android SDK. That's why in Android 11, we added more nullness annotations, making your calls to those APIs safer. Developers' productivity comes from great tooling. And as such, we've added built-in Android Kotlin Live templates, which allow you to use shorthand to add common Android constructs into your Kotlin app. At the same time, new Kotlin-specific lint checks help you make Kotlin code more language idiomatic. This is especially useful as you're transitioning from the Java programming language to Kotlin. Looking at the compiler toolchain, R8, our shrinker tool, contains new Kotlin-specific optimizations. For example, eliminating intrinsic checks when it can prove that the whole application doesn't need them. Materials to help you learn Kotlin are also expanding. For example, Kotlin Vocabulary is a YouTube series that explains specific Kotlin keywords in each video. Looking at the documentation, we have updated our Kotlin page on developers.android.com with all of our latest code labs and guidance for getting started with Kotlin. Finally, Kotlin Everywhere, the program that we ran together with JetBrains and Kotlin enthusiasts, reached over 30,000 developers. Last year was another really big year for Kotlin. And while we're big fans of Kotlin, we want to reassure you that Android is not dropping support for writing apps in Java. Kotlin is an important contributor to the Java ecosystem, and any improvement to the larger ecosystem also benefits Kotlin developers. So I wanted to take a brief detour and show some of the improvements that we have made in the last year for developers targeting the Java ecosystem, no matter what language. We've been working on D8 desugaring to enable using newer Java language features in existing versions of Android. This support has been stable in the last few releases, and in Android Studio 4.2, we will turn the sugaring of Java 8 language features on by default. As library support is as important as features, Android 11 adds a few additional APIs, such as off methods on collections. To avoid having you wait for these new APIs to land on most devices, we introduced the ability to desugar core Java language libraries, such as Streams and Time, starting in Android Studio 4.0. This makes it easier to use general purpose open source libraries on Android. This library desugaring functionality was built in close partnership with Google's internal tooling team. 
As you can imagine, within Google, we're also doubling down on Kotlin. Over 55 of our apps are now using Kotlin. And here you see a few of Google's most popular apps that have already started using Kotlin in their code base. Our large internal code base counts over a million lines of Kotlin code. We have recently started using Kotlin for server-side code as well. I personally had the pleasure of writing some code analysis in Kotlin and then running that code at scale inside a MapReduce on thousands of cores. As part of us building Kotlin support for our internal code base, we've added Kotlin support to some of our core libraries, such as gRPC and Protobuf. The gRPC work has recently been open sourced and Protobuf will follow soon. We're also using our large internal code base to help vet the new compiler work that will be available in Kotlin 1.4. And speaking of Kotlin 1.4, it is currently available through the Early Access Preview program and brings many improvements. On the compiler side, this includes language additions, type inference improvements, and generating type annotations in bytecode of Java 8 plus targets. On the library side, 1.4 brings a common reflection API, program configuration for Kotlin reflection, and new contracts. The release also brings a slew of performance improvements all across the board. Let's take a deeper look at some of the new language additions. From an early point, Kotlin has supported SAM, or single abstract method conversions, for interfaces defined in the Java programming language. However, as Kotlin supports higher order functions natively, it did not support this for Kotlin interfaces. 1.4 adds the notion of fun interfaces. Instances of the fun interface can be created using Lambda syntax, and this feature will make exposing Kotlin APIs to Java consumer even easier. The next feature I want to showcase is a small addition to the language, but I believe it's a powerful one. Up until Kotlin 1.3, parameter lists were not allowed to have a trailing comma for the last element. 1.4 removes this restriction. By allowing the trailing comma, the code looks more symmetrical and it will cause fewer distractions in code review, as adding new entries will no longer highlight multiple chains lines. These new features help with productivity for sure. However, the biggest thing that will help your productivity is tooling performance. We've heard you, and both JetBrains and Google are working hard in this area. The new front-end compiler, which I mentioned earlier, will deliver large improvements. But as writing a new compiler is a large undertaking, you want to make sure the compiler is not only fast, but also correct. It will be a while before this is available in the stable releases. So we need to make sure we add additional performance gains in the meantime. We've been working on support in the Kotlin Gradle plugin to make annotation processors more incremental, as well as helping annotation processor authors make their annotation processors ready for incremental runs. To help track IDE performance issues, Google and JetBrains teams have been organized in combined performance hackathons. These have led to numerous improvements in Kotlin 1.3.60 and above. On the Gradle side, we're working with Gradle Inc. to make drastic changes to its model for incremental compilations under a project named Instance Execution. Combined with additional caching for faster up-to-date checks, we are seeing up to 30% improvements in controlled experiments. This work is under heavy development and expect more news in the coming months. One topic around performance I want to talk about is a new project called Kotlin Symbol Processing. Our data shows that many Kotlin builds are significantly slowed down by annotation processors. The Kotlin tool chain needs to perform lots of magic to make these run seamlessly between Java and Kotlin, leading to these performance concerns. My team has been working on Kotlin Symbol Processing, or KSP, as an alternative to this. Instead of using CAPT, developers can now build lightweight plugins that run as part of the Kotlin compilation process. KSP allows for incremental resolution of symbols, and from porting some existing annotation processors, we're seeing 30 to 40% faster compilations. KSP comes with a rich set of APIs and provides access to all Kotlin symbols, including ones that are not available in the Java programming language, such as properties, function types, etc. KSP is multi-platform ready, so you can write your symbol processor once and use it on all target platforms your project uses. We're launching a developer preview of KSP today. And while it's not quite ready for production usage, we want to invite existing annotation processors authors to give it a spin and provide us with feedback via the short link visible on the slide and the video description below, or via the KSP Slack channel on kotlinlang.org. So far, we've seen a lot of great things for both Kotlin and Android, but this is the Android 11 beta launch show. So let's briefly talk about Android 11. With Android 11, we have deprecated the async task class. And let's be honest, it's been an API with a fair share of problems to begin with. So what should you use instead? Well, developers have turned to various custom solutions, including threads, executors, higher level libraries such as RxJava or Guava. And with Kotlin, there is one more contender, and that is coroutines. Coroutines are the Kotlin way for doing asynchronous programming, 
with full support in the language and library since version 1.3 was released over one and a half year ago. Here you see a small example using coroutines to perform an asynchronous call to receive server-side data, followed by asynchronous call to store that data in a local database, again followed by a UI update. Coroutines code is executed in a scope. In Android, we have libraries to tie these lifetime of these calls into the Android lifecycle. Dispatchers allow you to schedule execution of network and database access on the IAO background thread. Async network calls can be made through libraries like Retrofit that support coroutines out of the box. And here, we're using Room's coroutine support to store the data on the device without blocking the UI thread. Finally, we pass the value onto the view model to be displayed in the UI. With all these asynchronous steps, the IDE clues you in on any asynchronous behavior with an icon on the left side of your code. Today, we're officially recommending coroutines as the way to do asynchronous programming in Kotlin. And if you haven't adopted Kotlin yet and are struggling with asynchronous programming, this is another great reason to take a closer look at Kotlin. You might wonder why so many developers chose to pick coroutines as their async solution and why we stand by their choice with our official recommendation. Coroutines are a particularly good fit for mobile applications running on Android. Structured concurrency helps developers scope the work to the application lifecycle and prevent memory leaks. Next to this, callback-free code is easier to read and less error-prone, while built-in support for cancellation and natural exceptions handling helps ensure that error cases is treated gracefully. Many of our APIs already support using coroutines. To enter the world of coroutines, we have created special-made coroutine scopes that allow you to run async code inside view models, and within these scopes, you can make use of the coroutine support in various Jetpack libraries. For example, in the Android Room library, which provides structured database access, you can easily access databases without blocking the main thread through coroutines. Meanwhile, longer running tasks are often modeled through jobs inside Work Manager. With Coroutine Worker, you can easily model job cancellation. Both of these are extensions to existing libraries. In some of our new libraries, we started with coroutines from the ground up. A great example is our Paging 3.0 library. And lastly, the new Jetpack Compose API will rely heavily on coroutines as Compose and Coroutines complement each other splendidly. Composable functions declare snapshots that react to chains over time, and suspending functions provide that chains over time. So what does this recommendation mean for Java users and people who have adopted other higher-level asynchronous programming libraries? The great thing about the Coroutines library is that it makes it entirely possible to write interrupt support for both libraries. For example, paging will ship with RxJava and listenable future compatible APIs. Conversely, for libraries that have not yet adopted Coroutines APIs, you can use many third-party adapters, such as the ones that converts task-based API from Google Play services to Coroutines spent calls. And you can even write your own. We recognize that many of you will want to begin learning about Coroutines, and we've made sure that you're covered. Over the previous months, we have been updating our learning materials, including our Coroutine code labs. Multiple coroutine articles covering a large range of topics from basics to deep dives into coroutine internals. And finally, you can check out our conference talks from Android Dev Summit, Kotlin Conf, as well as specially recorded coroutines intro videos. You can find links to all our content in the video description below. To wrap things up, I hope it's clear to see that Android loves Kotlin. The language helps developers be more productive and makes them happier with their toolset. We continue to expand support for Kotlin within Android, and Google is expanding its own use of Kotlin, both on our Android apps as well as on the server. Google is working closely with JetBrains to make the language and tools even better. Kotlin 1.4 will bring many enhancements, and we would love to hear your feedback on Kotlin symbol processing. Coroutines are now a recommended way of doing asynchronous programming on Android for Kotlin developers, as it provides a structured, easy to read, and less error-prone way to do the many asynchronous tasks that Android developers need to code all the time. For those new to Kotlin, we hope our continuously expanding documentation, code labs, and videos helps you get started easily. And with that, thanks for watching.